Hi guys, my name's Ash. Welcome back to the Custodian Data Centre's YouTube channel. This is going to be another instalment of Data Centre 101 where I'm going to be telling you what goes on inside a server, how they are different to desktop computers or your gaming rigs that you have at home, and I'm going to kind of explain how you pick the right server for what you need. So stay tuned, roll the intro. Okay, so guys, thanks for joining us once again. So, we're going to be doing a server dissection. We're actually in the data center, as you can see. Um, I'm very hot at the moment, so you may see some sweat because we're in the hot aisle due to how our aisle containment works. Uh, but we're going to go through this server. This is an old server I called out of the storeroom. So, what we're actually going to look at doing is, first of all, discussing how to pick the right server for your needs. Um, We've got some older servers in production, we've got older switches in production, we've got newer servers and switches in production. Um, purely because we pick stuff based on what we need and you should be doing the same. You don't need to go for the latest and greatest, you need to go for the one that is um, best for what you need it to do. Um, just like a good whiskey, the great way to drink it is the way you like to. It's the same with servers, you know, pick the one that does the job, that's the most cost effective, and it also gives you the scalability in the future. So, servers have a, a naturally different function to your home computer. Your home computer is there to work. It's there to play games. It, you know, it's it's for doing just sort of sitting at a desk typing or gaming. Um, thankfully, I do both. So, um, I've actually got my own servers in this data center in the staff rack, um, which I'll kind of use as, as an example. So on my server, I'm running web servers, version control, so I'm running GitLab, um, I'm running web servers, I'm running game servers, um, but you won't do that on a typical computer. So the whole point of a server is to run 24 hours a day. It used to be in under intense workloads, heat. So this server right now, it's in the hot aisle and it is made to withstand these sort of heats. Um, Maybe one day we'll actually look at what sort of heat a server can withhold um, before it actually stops working. That'll be a nice little experiment. So, you know, it's it's all down to what you are doing with the server. So this server, for instance, this is just a standard 1U HP DL360 6th generation. So it's got, down on the front here, it's got, I think, eight. Yep, eight two and a half inch disks. And um, they're all hot swap. Uh, these are actually empty because this is a spare server, but you just put your disk in and it's hot swap. And that is the first difference between a server and a desktop computer. So servers, they're made to be always on, which means if something fails, it needs to carry on running. So these disks are set up using a certain type of technology called RAID, which it basically, all the disks work together, they talk to one another, and there's copies of data striped. Um, across disks so you the most common ones you use are RAID 0 and RAID 1 one striping so it, it splits data between the two disks so it's for quick access whereas RAID 1 is mirrored so the two disks are copies and if one fails you've still got a working copy um, you've also got RAID 10 which is also another common one which is a mixture of both so it it stripes and mirrors so you're quite protected so you get the speed and the replication. Um, yeah, so before this video goes on for another half an hour because I want lunch, um, we're gonna we're, get, we're just gonna jump straight into it. So I'm gonna take the lid off this server and we're gonna see what's inside. It's nice and easy. Most servers are toolless as well, so to take this off I just lift this up, pull the lid back, plop it off, and we're good to go. So here we are, we're inside. This is um, what runs everything. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. They might not look like this, but fundamentally they're the same. Um, so the video that you're watching now, it's stored on disks in this sort of setup. Um, so yeah, what we've got here, we've, we've got quite a robust setup compared to a desktop computer. Desktop computers typically will have one CPU, one bank of RAM, and they normally be limited to like 32 gig. Um, but we've got some servers that 
just one server can take half a terabyte of RAM, so that's quite a substantial amount of memory. Obviously that would be for more intense things like rendering and God knows what else. Um, so in here what we've got, it, the way servers work is they, they pull cold air in the front and it gets the air gets heated by the components which are naturally generating heat. The fans move the air across all the hot components, cooling them down, so the heat moves from the components into the air, then the air gets chucked out the back, which is why it's hot right. Because we drop the front air in, goes through, gets thrown out the back, nice and easy. Now, with servers, because they're so small, I mean, this is just one new server, you can't get me a five, six, seven year. Um, this is a one new server, so the fans themselves are actually quite small. They're probably an inch square by two inches long, but man, do they spin. One of our customers, uh, I can't say who for obvious reasons, but if you were to go into one of our data centers um, around the corner, as in like through that door there, they've got servers that are, the fans are set to 100% and it's that one customer that's caused these ear protection because the decibel level is so loud, um, or so high, should I say. So anyway, what we've got here, we've got two CPUs. Two CPUs means we can, we can process more, um, more RAM, of course, the more RAM, the more resources you can load into the memory and run. So, for instance, uh, I've got game servers on my server. If I, many, many moons ago, I used to run Minecraft game servers um, as a business, so I'd, I'd sell them, I'd have an automated billing system, etc., and they'd use a lot of RAM. So they'd have like half a gig of RAM, and then they could upgrade it. So the more RAM I had, the more services I could fit onto one server. So, for me, for that particular use case, Minecraft servers, in one year of space where I had 128 gig of RAM and octa-core CPUs, you know, pretty beefy setup, I could, I could fit a lot of clients on that one server, still have room to expand it, and it would give me the best, financially, I would be making, I'd be looking at how much money I make per U. If I put more RAM in, my money per U goes up, so for that use case, obviously. But again, most of, well, all of this is toolless. So we've got the fans that we've covered. These are all hot swap. You can just pull them out, put them back in. Um, we've also got in here, we've got the hot swap discs, the hot swap fans. We've got the RAM, which is um, quite a common thing between um, desktop and servers. The only difference is with servers, you get what's called ECC registered, which is basically error correction. So if there's memory errors, it can correct them. Um, without disrupting, so it's more for for things like database servers, purely because you need you need that kind of security there. Um, what has just occurred to me is on my right I've actually got an anti-static strap, which you're probably wondering why is he not wearing one. Now the reason I'm not wearing one is because I'm not sure if it's actually in the shop, but this this metal table is earthed directly to an earthing point on our wall. So as soon as I've touched this, I've I've kind of balanced out my my um, my charge between me and the server. So now the server's also on the table, everything is grounded so I can work quite safely. But if you weren't, say you're in our build room, I'd be wearing one of these because I need to be grounded. Otherwise the static energy on me could short circuit pull. Um, so yeah, the CPUs on this model are also hot swap. So you just kind of push down here, pull the clips out to the side and then the heat sinks will come up. I'm not gonna take them all the way off because I'd, one, I don't need to so I, I then need to go and find more thermal paste. Um, and that's also another thing to consider with servers, the thermal paste is slightly different um, to, to desktops because you'd, you'd probably use more, when, when you buy a game in a rig for instance and you build your own, you use a high-end thermal paste. It's the same sort of thermal paste as you'd use in the server because the thermal dissipation is so much more. There's there's a much higher, you know, the, the processes are running at much higher speeds, they're running for longer, they're in a different atmosphere. So it, it, it's just one of those things that you've got to be considerate of when you're building it. Most servers will ship with the right spec thermal paste anyway, but if you use desktop thermal paste, you can expect it to not work as well or not transfer heat as well. So it's just one thing to consider. So moving on this way, we've got the memory as we've discussed. Normally you'll have one bank um, per CPU, so this RAM will be for this CPU and this RAM will be for this CPU. And with servers, you get a handy little guide in the lid, 
So in the lid here, it actually tells you what's going on. And down here, uh, where is it? Uh, somewhere on here. Okay, I can't find it. Um, it actually tells you what order to put the RAM in, what slots, and it tells you why. Um, it also tells you different limits. So if you'd fill up uh, like this bank without a CPU in, so if you filled up the bank for CPU 2, which is actually this one, if you'd fill up this bank but not have a CPU, the server might not run. It might run but disable the RAM, or it might just work. My server will happily run with RAM in processor 2's um, bank without a processor in it. I've got a processor in it, but it will run without, so we're happy there. So again, moving on this way, we've got an SD connection here, which, you know, it's, it's if you want to put, like, say an OS on there, pop it in and you don't want to use a disk. Say it's like Kali Linux, for instance, you can just pop your SD card in there with the OS and it can boot. You know, pretty straightforward. Now moving further on this way, we've got, we've got some RAID. So RAID is what I was saying about the disk. So this little thing here is a BBU or battery backup unit. So it's literally a battery so that if the server loses power, the RAID card can still do its thing. It's, it's very similar to a CMOS battery on a motherboard, which I can't actually see on here. It's probably buried somewhere. Um, but yeah, it, it serves the same function, but just for RAID. So this card controls it. They plug in here, cables go along the side and it plugs into what's called the yeah. back plane and it <coughs> talks to the hard disks, makes everything work. So yeah, that's a battery backup unit. Again, this is just a server that I've pulled out of stores that is probably for spares by the looks of it. But looking at it, we've <coughs> we should actually have a clip for this here. There's normally a bit of plastic as well that aids with airflow, but I've already taken it out because it's so fiddly. Um, so yeah, we've got that, we've got expansion slots here, just like you do on a computer, but they're sideways, because if you were to fit a network card here, you leave one go on, so they flip it. On here you've also got dual power supplies, so, oh, they just pull out. If one fails, it will tell you, it will tell you, like the server itself will tell you, and you just swap it, pull it out while it's on, plug it back in. <coughs> okay, I think, says looking that's probably it I mean you've still got the same basic features as a desktop you've got a little speaker here so when you turn it on and you've put the wrong RAM or you've mixed speeds it starts beeping at you you can then look at those beep codes in the user manual um, you've also got rails on the side so in the rack you plug your rails in and this will just slide in whole point of rails on most services you can probably see in our racking video um, on our channel it it stops the server coming all the way out so you can pull it out and work on it in the rack which is quite cool but again you need to think about grounding you need to make sure the rails are properly installed so if you pull it out and it falls on you there's a blame there's a claim um, you've also got usb ports on here as well next to the sd slot which basically serves the same function as the sd um, yeah i mean it's it's pretty much the same as a desktop but on steroids effectively you know it's beefy it's made to run 24 hours so everything is on a different grade so you can put desktop ram in here you can put desktop discs in here would i recommend it no no way because they're they're not made to be running 24 7 they're not made to be in this sort of environment where the where the temperatures could change very quickly um, for instance if we're doing maintenance on some of our infrastructure we turn the chillers on and the temperature drops you know, some home hardware isn't made to run at those temperatures. Um, you know, and, and even if a data center had a failure in their cooling system, again, it might not be made to run at the high temperatures as a result of said failure. So, yeah, I think that's probably it. I'm just going to have a quick look at the front. Yeah, I mean, you've got, you just got expansion slots on the front here. You know, it's not really anything special. Some of them have this little diagnostic panel. Um, down here so this correlates to what's on the back of the cover so it shows you where there's potentially problems so you've got power supply one power supply two um, the locking mechanism on the lid um, they also have intrusion devices there's normally a little button somewhere that gets pressed down when the lid goes on it just tells you if someone's been in it but when it goes off you might get that idea any issues with the memory any fans you know it's all it's all there to help you well 
run without any issues. Um, and then you've got the stuff on the front, you've got your power button, you've got your UID, which allows you to identify it, and it also shows problems. So, yeah, I think I've rabbited on enough, you know. Yeah, I think I have. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to wrap this up, um, I'm going to put the lid back on because. I see enough of these, it's kind of giving me nightmares. Um, we actually had a client the other day that needed some RAM, put in some more RAM installed into his server, so we brought it out to the workbench, we were grounded, done all the work, put it back in for him. You know, it's it just makes life so much easier for us and messing about screws and stuff. So, But yeah, that's it. Guys, this video is kind of an introduction to um, service. I'm not going into too much detail, but Raf, my colleague, has done the, um, the night in the life of a knock engineer. He's actually going to be doing a construction of a hypervisor, so he's going to be showing you how to turn a server like this into something capable of running many servers on it. So check that out, that'll be coming in the next few weeks. As soon as it's as soon as it's online, we'll put a, vi a video in the description, a link in the description to the video, and then you guys can check that out. Awesome to even just give it a try, even if it's just for the hell of it. You know, it's, it's all informational, which we love. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, there's some good content coming that we've got in the pipeline. So stay tuned. We'll see you in the next video. Hit subscribe. Hit the bell icon. Comment on what you want to see next. And we'll do it all in the next video. Cheers, guys.